config. So it is 1030. So we will go ahead and get started. So thank you so much, Sam and Myrna for joining us today. Um, we're so excited to um, both have you and have you talk about this very important topic that we feel like would be very beneficial and useful for so many of our attendees. So we have a number of attendees um, watching us through Zoom as well as Facebook Live. Um, at the same time, if for any reason you are not able to watch the full program or you would like to share it with friends and family, we will be providing a recording um, and the live will be up on Facebook. Um, for a certain number of days, as well as YouTube permanently. So we will be able to have you rewatch. So without further ado, I'm going to read a little bit of information about our special guests that we have today. So first and foremost, um, Myrna Wilkins is a lead coach at Iris Vision. She's a legally blind user of the device and has vast experience working with low vision patients and has trained hundreds of users by walking them through the process step-by-step step to ensure the achievement of their personal vision goals. As a legally blind individual herself, Myrna is well-versed with the current low vision technology that exists on the market and the varying needs of those within this community. So thank you so much, Myrna, for joining us. Um, next up, Sam Seavey. I'm sure many of you already know him. Sam is a YouTube personality from the channel, The Blind Life. Sam was diagnosed in early adolescence with Stargardt's and which is a form of macular degeneration and was legally blind by his mid teens. He launched his YouTube channel several years ago and since then has supported thousands of individuals in their own vision loss journeys. His platform is dedicated to sharing his personal experiences living with low vision through reviews of assistive technology devices, instructional videos, as well as tips and tricks he's learned over the last 30 years. So in this webinar, Sam and Myrna will be discussing some of their own personal experiences and providing more insight to those of you who are perhaps pretty early on into this journey of vision loss. And I'm sure many of you who are well into it as well. So just a couple housekeeping tips. We will also have a Q and A session at the end of the program. So in case at any point throughout the conversation, you would like to ask a question, feel free to utilize the chat or the Q and A box. And um, we will get to those questions at the end. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Myrna to start the conversation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mel, for that great introduction. So hello, everybody out there. As I always like to say, good morning, good, e good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you're joining us from today. Super excited to be here with Sam, and we're going to share some uh, really, um, I believe, valuable information, as Mel mentioned, for those of you who are going through sight loss right now, maybe at a later time in your life or have experienced sight loss um, at a younger age and are living with it throughout your life. Uh, I know for me, I have Stargardt's disease, just like Sam, and um, it's been a, quite a journey. How about for you, Sam? Like, I, I know that, how, how old were you again when you got your Stargardt's diagnosis? Yeah, I was uh, right around age 11. Um, okay. My, um, I have a sibling, my sister has it as well. So, so the doctors kind of knew they should be keeping an eye out on me as well. And sure enough, uh, I, I, I got it as well. <laughs> and so, yeah, right around age 11. Yeah, that's around that, the time for me too. About 12 years old is when I was diagnosed. The difference is for me, I don't really have anybody else in my family who has Stargardt's disease. I don't have any other siblings. Out of five brothers and one sister, I'm the only one. So it's, it's very interesting the way Stargardt's hits. Like sometimes it, it affects multiple family members. Sometimes it skips generations mm -hmm. from what I understand. So yeah. it's uh, definitely a, an interesting condition. <laughs> I know that it's a form of macular degeneration, which is something that affects a lot of people. Um, so that's when something like iris vision comes into play, you know, where we can wear this assistive technology, like just on our heads and be able to actually see. So I know for me, like, had I known about Iris Vision or had Iris Vision even existed back in the day, it would have been such a life-changing experience for me. Um, I use it every single day in pretty much everything I do. So whether it's computers or reading or in the kitchen, whatever it is, uh, 
I, I use my iris vision. So I know that it's something that's beneficial for a lot of people out there as well. Um, but what other uh, like assistive technology do you think is a really good fit for someone who might be coming into their sight loss uh, just now, maybe at a later age? Well, you know, you, you kind of touched on it. Um, I've said this so many times on my channel that we're, we're truly living in the best time in history uh, to have a vision impairment or a disability of any kind. Um, in fact, I, I do this presentation that where I talk, I touch on this and I have a slide that shows, uh, you know, some, some people sitting on a, on a wagon, little house on the prairie days and, you know, where your nearest neighbor is several miles away and once a month you've got to load up the wagon and go into town to get supplies and, oh man, I can't imagine what a nightmare it would have been living back then being visually impaired um, without this amazing technology that we have now. So, I mean, even when we were younger, you and I, um, I'm sure you can, you can, uh, you know, kind of relate to, we had those large print textbooks. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you I know, definitely remember those. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. They'd say, here's your large print textbook. Here's your monocular. Here's you sitting in the front row of the, of the classroom. All right. You're good to right. go. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, so, but nowadays he, here's all of your textbooks on this iPad. Um, and, you know, here's this, this device that can see whether it's Iris Vision or something else. They have lots of sure. things available now that you can see the board and even some of these things can stream the, the content that the teacher's showing on the smart board, can stream it right into your little device there. Uh, gosh, I can't, it's just, it would be such an such a incredible difference um, going through all of that now with vision right. impairment and all the technology. And remember having the CCTV like rolled from classroom to classroom. <laughs> we had one. We had one in the library. Uh, I was I was able to go down into the library and use that one. I didn't. I didn't get the luxury. You must have been. You must have gone to a rich school. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Mine. They had a little rolly thing for mine. Yeah. Oh, you're you know, lucky. You're spoiled. I know. That's what it is. <laughs> but yeah, and I remember that in college even too, like having. The CCTV being rolled from classroom to classroom, um, having yeah, them or the four, four sided tapes. The yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how far we've come now. Yeah. Like you're saying, and it's so easy to have you know an audio book now. You don't have to use the four sided tape thing. It's so easy to, um, like you said, have access to the smart board or to like your books electronically for school things like that. Um, for those people who are more in like the retirement age, oh my gosh, like audiobooks are so amazing. They're so helpful. Mm -hmm. And um, not very many people know too much about like Bard. You know about Bard, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. You can, that's a downloadable app that you can get. Um, and it's uh, affiliated with the uh, National Library for the Blind. So mm -hmm. you have access to like all these different books on audio which is really cool. So I think that's something that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of, like those type of things, um, especially later in life, because, you know, people are used to actually being able to see, right? Like to actually pick up a book and read it. And all of a sudden they get to a point where they pick up the book and, oh, wait, I can't see it the way I used to be able to see it, like what's going on. That's a big mm -hmm. sign. I mean, I'm not a, by any means, I'm not an ophthalmologist or a doctor or anything like that. But I mean, that's something that you might want to pay attention to those type of signs. Like all of a sudden you can't see, or you have to hold things closer or things look a little bit blurrier or things are bending, like things that, that are supposed to be straight kind of have a bend, those type of things. Um, I, I believe that are, you know, kind of signals, you know, and again, by all means, not a doctor, just saying I, this, <laughs> these are the things that I've heard um, throughout my career as a coach at Iris Vision and just in general as a partially sighted person, I know those type of things um, are things to look out for, especially later on in life. Uh, so um, what type of things are usually something that people want to hear about from you, Sam, like when it comes to like their sight, uh, you know, progressively changing as they're getting older? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, well, that's that's what the whole topic is here is, is um, what I wish I knew. And, um, you know, we talked about you and I, we started losing our sight at an early age. So it's 
a little different. The things that I wish I knew about didn't exist back then. Right. Um, so, so I kind of think about the people that I work with in my day job as an AT trainer. Um, and you, you'll probably be able to relate to this as well. I'm sure you guys deal with a lot of the same similar things working with your clients. Um, we hear the number two, the two most common things I hear about is um, people miss being able to drive. That's that's probably number one. And then being able to read, as you as you mentioned, uh, they grew up reading and they, they had a lifelong love of reading and they can't do it as well anymore. And they're pretty upset about that. Um, so I would I try to recommend and tell them that first thing I say is that you're going to be able to do well, except the except the driving until we get driverless cars. Uh, you, you're going to be able to do anything you want to do. You're just going to have to learn this new way to do it. Um, and it might, it's just going to take practice and repetition and all that. And it's, it's going to be frustrating at first, but it, it'll get easier the more you do it. Um, reading is one of those, uh, as you mentioned, audio books, uh, the National Library Services for the Blind. They, they have the, the digital player that you can get. They've got the BARD app. They've, they're on the Amazon Echo, um, so you can listen to it that way. Um, they're working on some new things, some really cool new things. Uh, so that's that's one of them. Or just using digital magnification, you know, like the Iris Vision. Um, the Iris Vision, not just for reading, it, it can in, enhance a lot of different situations. Um, I've made videos about one of the places that I love wearing, wearing an Iris Vision is just sitting around the table with my family, talking, uh, playing a board game, playing cards, just spending time with the family and being able to zoom in and see like my daughter's face who is, her face is changing all the time so quickly and I don't wanna miss anything. So being able to zoom in and see the detail, um, you know, it's like I said, it, 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 it's definitely life-changing. Yes, absolutely. Um, and. Like you said, a lot of the time people do miss driving and, you know, it's it's something that's probably very uh, emotional for someone to have to give up their driver's license. I, oh, I've yeah. people who are very like, you know, traumatized by having to give up their license. But then I run into people who are like, man, it is what it is. You know, <laughs> I don't have to drive anymore, but and then they'll say, luckily I have so-and-so, like it's a spouse or a loved one or a friend or a neighbor, someone who's usually really helpful. So that's always good. So it, it's nice to be able to depend on people and lean on people who are willing to help you and support you, um, but not necessarily like uh, treat you like a child, right? You don't want to be treated that way, but yeah. definitely someone that you know you could reach out to and say, hey, uh, I need some help. That's, that's something important to know because I know that a lot of people sometimes feel uncomfortable doing that because they feel like, oh, I don't want to, you know, burden this person or I don't want right. to, you know, and it, that's not the case. It really yeah. is like if you, for those of you out there who are coming into uh, sight loss, don't be afraid, don't be embarrassed to reach out to, you know, a close friend, loved one, family member, uh, and, you know, accept their their assistance and accept their help because really they just want to help and for those of you out there who are the loved one or the friend or the neighbor um a lot of the time it's new for for us too or for them too because they're not used to seeing uh that particular person or or that particular person needing some kind of assistance so just know that you don't necessarily have to treat them you know, differently, they're, they're still the same person. They just need a little bit of help here and there. So yeah. I think that's a big deal too. Like just because we can't see too well doesn't mean we can't do anything, right? Do you mm -hmm. ever run into that, Sam? Like where people are like treating you in a way that makes you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty independent. I just can't see. Yeah, oh yeah, so? yeah, yeah. I um, it actually to touch on what you just said about being a burden. Um, I, I, I hear that all the time as well. People say that I don't want to be a burden on my friends, my family. Um, and I understand they, they've, once again, they've spent their whole life being independent and all of a sudden they have to rely on somebody and that's very difficult. Um, what I, I tell people, the advice I give is to, to flip it around. If they were the ones needing the help and they were asking you, would you think they were being a burden? Absolutely not. You know, we as humans, we're we're ingrained in us. It's ingrained in us to help, to want to help people. 
Yeah. Hopefully, if you're <laughs> if you're a good person, anyway. Um, so you should never feel like a burden. They want to help. They get a, a sense of fulfillment in helping. So you should you should let them. Um, that being said, <laughs> as you said, we like to be independent and we want to be independent as much as possible. And I definitely encourage that. I mean, that's one of the main goals of my channel is to pe teach people how to be their best blind life and, and, and their best independent blind life, if possible. Um, and it's happened to me. I've, I've made videos about that. I made a video where I talked about um, traveling to California uh, for a conference a couple years ago, before, back when we were able to do that. You guys remember conferences, right? <laughs> what? Um, and the person at the, the security guard, um, I, well, the, someone helped me to the security station and because um, they were taking me to my gate, which I'm always happy to have someone help me to my gate. Oh, yeah. makes it so much easier. Um, but when we walked up, the security guards started talking to the gentleman right next to me and saying, is he wearing a belt? Is he, has he shown his ID, blah, blah, blah. They're like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, right here. Hello. <laughs> I'm right here. I can hear you talking and I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you, yeah. Can, you can ask me those questions, sir. It's fine. I'm you're not going to catch anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I love? When they come out with the wheelchair. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, no, I, I don't need the wheelchair. I can walk. I just can't, yeah. can't see too well to get to my gate. That's, I just need to follow someone. Yeah, but, especially yeah. in that situation, I always say, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to be sitting on an airplane for like three hours. Yeah. I want to walk, stand up while I can. <laughs> Thank you very you much. <laughs> I used the wheelchair one time for my luggage. <laughs> yeah, let's keep the wheelchair because I need, you know, I need it for my luggage. That's funny. <laughs> uh, only That's funny. The, handle, the handle broke. So yeah, it's not because I just wanted it for that. It's my handle broke. So it was a good <laughs> excuse. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I definitely... Um, see that too. The, the one I love is when we go to like a grocery store or something and we're trying to see the pin pad, right? If we use our card and they're like, oh, um, do you need glasses? You should get glasses. I'm like, I, yeah. yeah, I should, but it's not going to help. But then I have to explain why, well, you know, I'm partially sighted. I, I have oh, yeah. my generation. Then they're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm blind without my glasses. It's like, okay but when you have them you can see <laughs> you know? whereas we can't and that's something I think that it's really important uh, to get that um, awareness out there too um, for people like us people who can still see but can't see just like I love that shirt you're wearing I can see it, but I can't see and it makes so much sense and and that's what it's like when uh, people lose their sight you know, no matter what age, but uh, it's hard, I think, sometimes for uh, an individual, maybe later on in life, who's lost their sight, um, to really understand that and, and embrace that, you know, the whole, I can see, but I can't see. Mm -hmm. Because we, sometimes people will clam up, you know, and be like, oh, I can't see. So they think they can't do anything. But yeah, this is where it's so important. And here's the thing with, uh, what I wish I knew, right? Going with our topic, here's very important in my opinion, practice using the sight that you have left, you know, right? Our, our sweet spot as they call it, wherever it is, um, practice using that sight because it's going to be so helpful. Like I know for me, when I move my eyes to like the one o'clock position, um, that's when I could see the best, like for reading or if I'm trying to look at something in detail or, uh, you know, if I'm trying to like just focus on something for me, like about the one o'clock position, moving my blind spot up that way is the best. So I think that's something people tend to struggle with because they're so used to, okay, let's use macular degeneration as an example, right? They're so used to looking straight ahead. Typically with macular degeneration, you lose the central sight, right? So yeah. when they're looking straight ahead, they're not going to see anything, but that's what they're accustomed to doing, right? If they move their blind spot out of the way and use their peripheral sight, then they're going to realize, oh wait, I can see. So I don't know, that's that's something that's uh, really important as you're losing your sight is figuring out how to use the sight that you have left. Would you agree? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then and then start to rely on your other senses too, you know, or start to not rely, but start to pay attention to your other senses as well. Um, you know, uh, in the kitchen, 
listen to the sound of the, the, the food in the, in the skillets, um, pay attention to the way it smells, you know, start to kind of start to kind of set those those uh, memories or those those um, I don't know, I don't know how to say it, but you know, where yeah. where it's like, okay, that smell, I know that smell, that smell means my bread is done, it needs to come out of the oven. I don't need to set a timer, you know, or I can set the timer, but I'm not going to rely on it. I'm going to also pay attention to the way the, the smell coming off of it is. Mm -hmm. um, pay attention to the way things feel, you know, so you don't have to try and use your eyes so much you can just reach over and feel it and know what it is um, because you you've already set that impression of what that feels like um, and you're hearing of course you know while you're outside uh, walking around your neighborhood or some location pay attention to the sounds that are around you pay attention to the the engine sounds of the cars near you so you can kind of get an idea of where they are uh, without even having to look around, um, you know, it, it, it all, it all comes in very helpful. Oh yeah. I know my sense of hearing girls. I said, no chips in the room. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter can't get away with anything. <laughs> yeah. Same here with mine. They're like, how do oh. you know? I'm like, mommy hears everything. <laughs> yes. It's awesome. Our yeah. super hearing. <laughs> right. <laughs> but so true. Using the other senses and honing in on them. Absolutely. Um, like yeah. you said, especially our sense of touch and also like um, our memory. Oh, here's a really good thing for everybody out there. Um, it's important to find a place for everything, if that makes oh, sense, yeah. right? Because when we put things in the same place, we know it's there. Um, if it gets moved, because sometimes um, people who, who are the sighted person, you, you know, they will sometimes move stuff around and I, I've definitely gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, if I have something somewhere, please don't move it because that's exactly where I need it because I know mm -hmm. where it is. So uh, I, I think that's important to just get into the habit of putting certain things, your important things in the same place so that you're not like searching around for your phone or your, uh, your, your books or your tablet or whatever, you know, it's important to find a place and, and keep that place and, also, um, something that I know uh, you guys are going to run into, especially coming into losing your sight, over there is going to be anywhere, right? <laughs> so when people say, it's over there, okay, we need a little more detail about where exactly over there is. Do you, do you, have you seen, ran into that one, Sam? I bet you have. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, I've got a t-shirt um, in my shop that's, that references that. Um, oh, really? Uh, some, someone once said, or I don't know who, who originally said it, but they said, um, saying over there only tells me that it's not right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it doesn't give me any more information than that. So let's come on, let's be more descriptive. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, now I have two shirts on my list from your shop. You <laughs> and one thing uh, you were talking about, everything having its place, an important area that a lot of people don't think about is in the refrigerator. Um, you know, it's okay for like leftovers. Of course, that's not gonna have a, a place, but your milk, your butter, uh, you know, if you have sodas in there, try to get into the habit and get your family members into the habit of putting those things in the same place each time so that you don't have to stick your head in a refrigerator and try and find something. You can just reach right for that spot. And then once again, feel for it, you know, um, and you know, it's always going to be there. Yeah. And, and you know what, that's where Iris vision actually comes in really handy too, to like wear it and, and look in the refrigerator and find those items or look in the pantry and especially with those spices, you know, like those mm -hmm. are so small, like the labeling on them. So there's lots of different ways you can identify your spices. Sure. Um, obviously, like I said, one way is wearing iris vision and being able to identify the objects in your pantry or, or cupboard or refrigerator um, by using any of the software lenses that you're comfortable with or any of the features on iris vision, especially if you're a user already. I mean, the bubble is one that's really helpful in those type of situations, or some people like the bioptic mode. Um, but there's also other ways to uh, like label things. Um, there are braille labelers, right, Sam? And, yeah. you know, different ways, you, different things that you could put on your spices to be able to identify. Um, I don't know, maybe sometimes people will use like bump dots 
you know, one bump is the garlic salt and two bumps is the onion powder, you know, just whatever you can do to make it easier for yourself to identify things without having to strain your eyes or like Sam was saying, without having like to stick your head all like in the refrigerator. <laughs> um, these type of things, like these are going to make uh, just the whole transition so much easier for you, so much more um, how can I say? Well, yeah, just easier in general because uh, it's it's tough. It's a tough situation uh, when you when you come into sight loss, whether you're a kid or you know a teenager, or a young adult, or in your mid life or later on in life. It doesn't matter. It's going to be a learning experience. It's going to be tough, and whatever you can do to make it easier, by all means, do it. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um... That's one thing I think I would have, I, I like to, to tell people and probably, you know, falls under the category of, of what I wish I had known um, mm -hmm. is to really start to implement systems more. Um, you know, we all use systems. Once again, putting that milk in the same spot on, on, in the refrigerator, that's your system for where the milk is. Um, you know, if in your bathroom, if you always put your toothpaste in the same spot, that's your system. So implementing these little systems, we, we live our days by systems and um, labeling things in your pantry that that, you know, my system for spices is I take a large black marker and I write the first letter of the spice on the lid because oh, um, my spices are laid out down low so I can just quickly glance at the lids and see, oh, there's a giant P. It's either pepper or paprika, right? It's, it's going to be one of the two. So it, it helps me narrow it down. Uh, that's my personal system. Um, but, you know, a system for identifying things in the freezer, you could put a rubber band around your, you know, the bag of food that you're looking for or you want to be able to find. That works really well in like office uh, refrigerators, you know, if, where everybody's food is in there. You want to be able to find yours, put a rubber band around it. Um, the shampoo and conditioner, put a rubber band around one of those, you know, which, and then just remember shampoo has a rubber band around it. There's little tricks and systems for labeling and identifying things and just, just everything in the blind and visually impaired world um, all over the place. And a great place to learn about those would be the Blind Life YouTube channel. <laughs> I've made videos on all these things. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many resources out there for one. Number one, the Blind Life, go there. Um, yeah. Them really does have really informative videos that are amazing. Um, so Thank you. you're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, uh, there's just, there's so many resources out there in general. There's YouTube, there's like all kinds of social media, there's your local um, areas like the library, I know sometimes will be able to assist people, um, the community center, sometimes there's like low vision support groups or something like that. So definitely look into the resources available in your area. Yeah. And if you can't find anything in your area, like, again, there's the World Wide Web, <laughs> where there's all kinds Facebook. of different Yep, there's Facebook, Instagram, yeah, yeah. YouTube, all that. I, I mean, yeah. TikTok? I don't know. TikTok? Yes? No? Eh, you, have, you have mixed feelings about TikTok. I want to I wanna be on TikTok, but it's not accessible, like, at all. Ah, so, I'm there's boycotting. A word, there's a word out to TikTok. We need your TikTok <laughs> yeah. to be accessible. They're writing your strongly worded letters. <laughs> all right. So... I'm, that's going to wrap it up for us and we can go ahead and open it for uh, questions. If anyone out there watching has any questions for me or Sam, please uh, go ahead and utilize the chat box and Mel, um, she's going to help us out here with these questions. So uh, again, thanks so much, Sam, for your time. It's always such a pleasure to, uh, you know, do a webinar or a coach's corner with you. So we definitely appreciate your time. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I, I we, we always have a good time doing these, so anytime. <laughs> awesome. Definitely. That was fantastic. Thank you both so much. So again, feel free to utilize the Q&A or the chat. And if you're on Facebook, um, go ahead and type your questions into the comment section. Um, but I do have a couple questions that came in. So you touched on this a little bit earlier, especially you, Sam, um, when you were talking about your systems. So um, one question is, what are some quick tips you have for reorganizing a kitchen? 
Um, and you touched, you talked about this a little bit, but maybe a couple more tips that might come to mind. Yeah, I'll, I'll go first, Myrna. Um, one thing I would say is definitely watch my uh, video I put out about two weeks ago. It was my accessible kitchen tour. I took a tour of my kitchen and, and showed all the different ways that I make it, I've adapted it to make it more accessible for me and um, talking gadgets and all that, labeling my spices, I talk about that. Um, but organization, declutter, 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 that's probably the number one thing. Uh, you know, get the stuff off the counters. I can't stand when a counter is full because I, I, it's like, I don't know where to put anything. I can't even put my bowl of cereal down <laughs> to fill it up with milk. And then I get frustrated. And then I'm just in this endless spiral of anger. <laughs> <laughs> right. So just de declutter. Um, and then, like I said, yeah, work on your systems, create your systems. Um, you know, another one that I use is having a lot of people have those decorative containers on their counters that has like sugar and salt and flour and that kind of thing in it. Um, and those are great, but oftentimes they're all the same exact container. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know if, any, if anyone else has ever put a teaspoon of salt in their coffee first thing in the morning. It's, it's not fun at all. So, uh, you know, thinking it's sugar. So, a very easy fix for that is to either get different shaped ones, but still kind of match in the motif or even different sized ones, you know, a small, medium, large, and that solves that problem. Then you can have those containers, but they're, they're accessible now and, and they're easily, uh, they work with your system. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I pretty much agree with everything that Sam was saying, you know, Try, I would say try to um, use different colored containers, like like Sam was suggesting. Like maybe if something is uh, consistent the same, maybe you just get a different colored lid. Um, absolutely declutter. <laughs> I'm right there with you on that one, Sam, for sure. Because sometimes things can be like so much, like such much visual noise almost even in a way. Oh yeah, it's overwhelming. Yeah, like sometimes when like stuff is like just everywhere too much, I'm like freaking out because I'm like having to see everything and it's it's already hard to see. So if you have things a little more decluttered and a little more organized, maybe finding different containers for things, um, that's going to be really helpful. Like, you know, the square container is your rice and the round container right. is um, your flour or, you know, whatever. Um, for sure, finding a system like that, whatever works best for you. Um, I really like your uh, Sharpie on the spices, Sam. That's a really great idea. Yeah. So, and I like the rubber band thing too, because uh, I like my shampoo on the left side and my conditioner on the right side. And sometimes I get swapped, you know, because I have a nine-year-old who uses my bathroom too. And putting that rubber band around one of those, that's a great idea. Solves but, the problem. <laughs> yes, it's easy. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And contrast, I would also mention contrast. Um, oh, yeah. the, the saying on the, the, the channel is contrast is king. Um, so in the kitchen, you know, if, if you're having a hard time seeing your food on your plate uh, and it's because maybe your plate has some kind of pattern on it, just get a, a white plate, you know, or a, or a black plate um, so that your food stands out because of the contrast. Yes, absolutely agree with that one for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. So very nice. I just wanted to share. Um, we had a Facebook comment um, that's saying I don't have a question, but I do want to thank you so much for the information. I have a 15 year old granddaughter that was just diagnosed and I just think you are both wonderful. So that is oh, one of awesome. our Facebook viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I just wanna, can I, if yeah, I could add just something course. real quick. Um, mm -hmm. I made a whole video geared towards people who were uh, like parents or grandparents in this case of, of children that were recently diagnosed. And something else that I would echo um, that I, I said in that video, and but I would also say it to anybody that's newly diagnosed is the main thing to remember is that it's going to be okay, right? It's, yes. it's going to be okay. Just yes. take a break. It's overwhelming. There's that sense of loss, the grief and all that, but just take a Take a deep breath. It's going to be OK. Uh, like Myrna said, there's tremendous amount of resources available. Um, you know, the kids are going to grow up and Myrna and I are perfect examples. You're going to they're going to grow up and have wonderful, happy lives. 
um, if they want them, you know, it, it's, it's, exactly. it's mostly about attitude, but um, it's going to be okay. That's the main thing. I love what you just said, Sam. It's attitude. Absolutely. You have to have a positive attitude of the, of, of the situation because it's, it's nothing that's uh, going to stop you from doing what you yeah. want to do. You can put your mind to it, get it done. It's just a challenge. That's all it is. It's just now a little more challenging. Exactly to get through life and that's okay. Who's, who's not up for a good challenge? I know I am. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. Very nice. Well, that is very true. Both of you can def definitely are prime examples of that. So wonderful. I also have a question coming in from one of our Zoom attendees. What do you say to people in a store when you need help? Any tips on that? Myrna, you wanna go first? Sure. So um, the cool thing about going to any store, especially the grocery stores, is you can go to the front desk and you can ask for assistance from the get go. And they'll always be very, very accommodating and they'll get someone to help you shop. So um, that's one thing. If you are more independent like me, <laughs> I'm a little more independent in that sense. I have my store memorized for the most part. I know where things are. But if I need help with something, like I'm not afraid to ask, uh, you know, if I see a, a worker, I might even ask a random person in the aisle, like, hey, I'm trying to look for this. I, you know, I, I can't see too well. I'm, I'm partially sighted. Um, and can you help me find it? And like most of the time, like 99% of the time, people are so helpful. Um, again, whether it's like a worker or just a random person in the aisle. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, unless you you just on off chance get someone who's having a really bad day, <laughs> you're yeah. they're going to be perfectly happy to help you. I mean, it goes back to what we said earlier. Um, I'm the same way. You know, I used to do all these crazy things like, oh, I forgot my glasses, or you know, uh, just it, it's just now maybe it's in my old age. I just don't care anymore. I'm I'm just like it's so much easier to be honest I can't see very well yeah I you know I'm visually impaired I'm legally blind whatever you want to say I just need help bottom line can you read this for me uh, <laughs> I have often uh, well you mentioned Myrna you mentioned using the um the card scanner at the checkout I don't even bother man I walk up and I'm like here's my card I need you to do it <laughs> um <laughs> but I've also you know over the last probably like five years or so I've really started to um get more comfortable with using my cane and I'm not using, I don't use a cane for navigation. It's for this particular reason right there is it's for identification. For it's so that when I go in and that person won't say, Oh, you, you need to get some glasses. It's like, <laughs> or, or I've walked in and yeah, did you forget your glasses? It's like, no, I can't see. And, and so I holding the cane answers all those questions. Um, True. And like I said, I don't use it for navigation. I don't need it for that. It's just purely identification. Right. So that might be something to think about as well. Yeah, for other people's awareness, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I mean, of course, uh, you know, there's all kinds of assistive technology out there as well to help with those type of things. Um, again, Iris Vision, I've taken my Iris Vision to the grocery store. Um, honestly, I've even used my cell phone, just the camera on my cell phone and zoomed in. I know there's a lot of different digital handheld magnifiers out there or just little handheld magnifiers that are like very powerful, very strong. So there's lots of different ways. If you want to go the independent route and do stuff yourself, utilize some kind of assistive technology, whether it's a handheld magnifier or something wearable, or like I said, even just a camera on your cell phone. Um, if that's proving to be too much of a challenge, then again, there's other resources you could ask for help. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I do when I go to a grocery store. Yep. Yeah. I've got a whole video showing, um, searching for medicine in the pharmacy using the Iris vision. Oh, nice. Yeah. One of the first ones I ever made with the Iris vision. <laughs> cool. Nice. Yeah. I feel like we have to link all of your videos. I know. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like everything and it's amazing. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's a video about that and about that, which is fantastic. We're gonna have to link them all in the caption. Um, oh so goodness. people can definitely look at that. 
Um, I do have another question coming in from Chris in the audience. He said, this may be too large of a question, but I'm wondering what your thoughts on screen reader programs on Windows, more specifically, which ones you like, like Windows Narrator, NVDA, Zoom Text, et cetera. Sam, take this one. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that can be a very large question. Um, I'll, I'll try to summarize. Um, narrator is a good option. It used to be the joke in the screen reader world, um, Windows Narrator, but they've improved it a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty robust option now. Uh, and it's free. You can't beat that. JAWS, of course, is the standard for, for most everybody. Everybody loves JAWS, although it's a lot like anything. You know, you have people that have always used JAWS and they love it. Then you have people that have always used NVDA and they hate JAWS. So it just depends on who you ask. Uh, but NVDA is another free option. Um, Zoom text just uses JAWS. So that's kind of, you know, there you got that. It's the same as JAWS, basically. And um, there's also Supernova, and I'm actually going to be doing a video about Supernova uh, coming up very soon. So you might have to wait to hear my thoughts on that. But uh, really, it's it's you have to look at budget too. If you can't afford Jaws, Jaws is like a $600 program. If you can't afford it, it doesn't matter how good it is. Um, Narrator is going to work great for you. So um, that's that's one thing to consider. And um, you know, I don't know. It, it, just try them out and see what works the best. Absolutely. It's going to depend on, on the user, I guess, too, right? If it's a good yeah. fit or not. I, I know for me, I have Zoom text like on my laptop, um, but I actually just use the native magnification on my computer, um, yeah. my desktop computer. It's an all-in-one Mac, and Mac actually has really great uh, accessibility. As well. like, like you say, uh, Sam, the accessibility has just improved so much on computers now that, you know, if, if one of these cool programs is not affordable or accessible or just something not in the works right now, maybe you want to figure out how magnification works or how screen readers work, try using your native um, accessibility on your computer if you can and try it out and get a feel for it. And then you can maybe make a decision on moving forward with a different platform like Zoom Text or JAWS or Maybe you will like Supernova. You'll have to check out Sam's video when he does it. But I hope That's that answers your question, Chris. Awesome. Thank you so much. So just a note to the audience members, in case there were any questions that weren't answered today or questions that might come to mind later, feel free to reach out to us. Um, if you click the link, if you're tuning in from Facebook, that is, if you click the link in the caption, you'll be able to fill out the contact information and we can get in touch with you and discuss um, anything you're looking into learning more about Iris Vision or any questions in general. Um, and if you are tuning in over Zoom, we will be sending this recording out via email. And again, feel free to reply to the email contact us, call us, um, and we will be happy to get in touch. So just to close out the session, thank you so much again, Sam and Myrna. It was, it's sure. always a pleasure having you guys and just hearing your discussion. We appreciate it so much. Um, I will pass it over to you guys for any last words. And again, to our audience, thank you so much for tuning in and we hope to see you at our next event. Awesome. Thanks, Mel. And definitely go check out The Blind Life, um, the YouTube channel. The Blind Life, Sam, you could give that uh, the uh, URL or whatever for people to go find you. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for uh, your participation. Remember, if you don't know about Iris Vision and you want to learn more, you can always call in. Uh, you can call into our customer support line at 855-207-6665, and they will um, be happy to answer any questions or, you know, send you over to someone who, who can answer any questions you might have about the device. Uh, always, as always, share your experiences. If you are a user, we wanna hear about your stories. We wanna hear about your experience with your Iris Vision. Um, but for the most part, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Sam, and I'll pass the mic over to you. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Thank you, Myrna. Thank you, Mel. Always, always a lot of fun um, doing these with you guys. Yeah. If you would like to reach out to me, uh, check out my YouTube channel. It's super easy to find youtube.com slash the blind life, all one word. Uh, even if you just Google the blind life, you'll find it that way as well. Um, and then you can check out my website, theblindlife.net. 
you can get in touch with me through there or by emailing sam at theblindlife.net. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.